This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is not going to be a traditional lens review. I'm sorry, but I haven't been feeling motivated lately. And lens reviews nowadays are not very exciting, especially with this specific lens that I don't personally think makes much sense with what's available right now for Sony E-mount. I'm not saying it isn't a great lens. I'm saying that, well, in my opinion, I don't see much of a purpose. So a trend that I've been noticing for a couple of years now are how third-party manufacturers are designing more of these unconventional lenses for Sony E-mount, right? So Tamron, right? They've been killing it with unique zoom lenses like the 35 to 150, the 70 to 180, the 20 to 40 f2.8. Sigma has been really killing it with those unique prime lenses like 28 1.4, 21.4, which I love, and even the 14 1.4. Now, when Sony briefed me on the 24 to 50 f2.8, my first reaction was, why? Unless the price is under $1,000 or it's super tiny, like I don't really see an appeal for this lens, especially with the Tamron 20 to 40. And it's, you know, 20 40 is only $700. Now, the thing is that I'm trying to keep an open mind here because I had mixed emotions when the 20 to 70 F4 was announced and it actually ended up turning out to be a pretty popular travel lens from what I can see on the internet. So who would want a 24 to 50 F 2.8? I would imagine someone who wants to replace a couple of their prime lenses for a compact zoom lens or a zoom lens user willing to trade some reach for some weight savings, size savings. Now, regardless of the reason, the problem is that the trade-off is still costing over a thousand dollars for a non G master lens. I just think that Sony should have made this a 20 millimeter instead of a 24 millimeter on the wide end. I've been using a Tamron 20 to 40 for around a year now, and this lens has the potential to be one of had the potential to be one of my favorite lenses my most used lenses i love how small and lightweight it is and but it's mostly because of the 20 millimeter focal length that's my favorite focal length for video the problem with the 24 millimeter is that the moment you use any kind of in-camera stabilization it quickly turns into damn near a telephoto <laughs> telephoto telephoto lens which is why i'd give i'd give up the extra reach for the wide end plus like with most of these cameras nowadays you can use APS-C mode active stabilization clear image zoom to damn near double your focal length from the testing that I've done with both lenses which hasn't been that much but the Sony does have a good amount of advantages over the Tamron that can be a deal breaker depending on who you are right so the biggest one is how the Sony 24 to 50 is able to maintain autofocus when you are zooming in or out, right? So like one of the biggest gripes with the Tamron 20 to 40 that I have is that when I would vlog or film my surroundings and if I racked zoomed, everything would briefly go out of focus for a second. So doing any kind of run and gun filming, this is something that you're going to notice and annoyed the hell out of me when I was using it. Second, the autofocus is just on a different planet, right? It can support up to, you know, shooting 30 frames per second and maintain autofocus tracking while zooming. So it's got all the latest and greatest. Third, with the Sony, you can take advantage of the in-camera features like focus breathing compensation, etc. Fourth, the build quality is much better on the Sony. Although it is heavier, the, the Tamron is just really plasticky. One thing that I don't like about either lens is how it's designed opposite of what I'm used to with traditional zoom lenses. So when you fully retract the lens, you would expect it to be at its widest focal length, right? But no, it's actually opposite. So when it's fully retracted, like closed, it's at its max focal length at 50 millimeter. It's a small complaint, but the thing is that on the Sony, it's more annoying because it extends much farther than the 20 to 40 in comparison. I wanna take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, that's Squarespace. 
So if you're looking to start a website, blog, or even an online store, you have to give Squarespace a shot, okay? If you're using your social media as your portfolio, you're doing it backwards, okay? Your social media page isn't yours, and the quality of your work is degraded. I mean, the compression and the crop, oh. Like with Squarespace, you get your own custom domain, and you can create a professional-looking website fast and easy. You don't need any coding or graphic design skills to do it. They have 24 seven customer support. If you wanna make some passive income, you can start an online store like I have and make some money while you sleep selling products. Now, if you use the coupon code Manny, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So link will be in the description. To round out my thoughts, I think that for people that own the A7C2 and the A7CR, a lens like this makes sense because it's considerably smaller than a 24 to 70 from any brand. Right. I also think that this would make a great travel lens for anyone that doesn't like using an F4 lens like myself. So when I went to Portugal last year, I only took two lenses, the Tamron 20 to 40 and the Sony 70 to 200. And with my A7R5 being able to crop in if needed, the 20 to 40 was perfect for photo and video content. Wide enough to film myself, but also it gave me that standard zoom range. I remember how happy I was that I brought that lens instead because of how small and lightweight it was. I do think that this Sony lens fills in that same, that same gap that the Tamron does. I just think that the price tag on this lens is a little too high considering all of the other options available for third, from third party manufacturers at the moment. Also, I just wish it was a 20 millimeter. I think they missed, they missed it. They missed the opportunity to make a, a super clutch lens, making it a 20 millimeter. It, man, it would have, man, it would have been really nice to have a 20 millimeter, but hey, uh, 24 to 50, I think we're going to see more of this moving forward. We're going to see a lot more of these unconventional lenses because I mean, I mean, actually we need an 8514 redesign. We, I think we need that or an 85 1.2 actually. If you want to learn all the technical specs of this lens, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. But I'm sure that you have already seen all the other videos on YouTube researching this lens. So I'm sure you already know it. This video was filmed entirely on the DJI Pocket 3. I've been filming everything on it lately. I bought it with my own money. DJI did not send it to me. So stay tuned for an unbiased review of trying to essentially replace all of my cameras with this one and right now i am confronting my fear of vlogging in public because i do have a fear of that um, i am at the park which is easy it obviously makes it a lot easier to talk to a camera but still i am hyper aware of everyone around me and it's not easy